everyone. It's been a good day so far. I woke up this morning on this side of the dirt. <laughs> so let's learn something new. Uh, to recap what we talked about in the last video, we took the JEDEC file from a GAL 16V8. It was this was recovered using an EEPROM programmer, the GAL 16V8 made by Lattice Semiconductor. We took the JEDEC file and using this diagram here, the array diagram, we came up with the two equations that activate the output pin 19. Those two equations were uh, pin input 2 high and pin 1 low and pin 5 high and pin 6 low and pin 11 high or pin 2 high and pin 1 low and pin 3 high and pin 5 high and pin 11 high. What we're going to do today is we're going to determine whether these output pins are active high or active low and what mode they're in. That mode is very important. In the GAL 16V8 you can configure those outputs to be a number of different architectures. Let me bring this up here and I'll see if I can zoom in. There we go. The GAL 16V8 can emulate all of these PALs right here. And these are the three modes that emulate those PALs. You have registered, complex, and simple. So we need to know when we're hand disassembling this GAL, the generic array logic, we need also need to know what mode we're in so we can bring up the right diagram here. Let me move this off to the side here. move this out of the way. You'll see that you have some exclusive OR positions, AC1 positions for each pin. So here in pin 19, the position of that bit we want to look at to determine the exclusive OR and the AC1 are at 2048 and 2120. Each pin has a bit that we need to be concerned with. So you want to make a chart based upon all of those bits. So here, the XORs at 2048 for pin 19, 2049 for 18, 2050 for 17, 2051 for 16, 2052 for pin 15, 2053 for pin 14, 2054 for pin 13, and 2055 for pin 12. Now, the AC1 for pin 19 is at 2120, 18 is 2121, 17 is 2122, 16 is 2123, pin 15 is 2124, pin 14 is 2155, 
pin 13 is 2126 and pin 12 is 2127 there's two more bits that determine the global configuration of this IC that is the registered complex or simple mode are global to the entire configuration those bits are at 2192 and 2193 so let's move this out of the way and we'll look at the chart that I made so I can document these bits move this into the frame here bring this back up they're moving here, shuffling things around, trying to get everybody into view here. Be patient with me. I'm working around the tripod here. Okay, so the first bit, let me back up a little bit here. The first bit that we're worried about is that position 2048 that's for the exclusive ORs the exclusive ORs determine whether that output is active high or active low so let's find position 2048 in the JEDEC file. If you come down here, 2048 is right here. And it is a 1. So let's write 1 up here. Position 2049 is right next door. That's also a 1. Position 2050 is 48, 49, 50. That's a zero. Write zero in your chart. 51 and 52 are also zeros. Let's write those down. 53, 54, and 55. Let's count to make sure. 48, 49, 50. 51, 52, there's 53, 54, 55, they're ones. Let's write that down. Now we're going to do the AC ones. The AC ones start out at 2120, position 2120 in the array here. Let's go find 2120. This is 2112, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There's 20 right there. Let me put a dot so I won't have to count these first eight. That one's a zero. And the next four, one, two, three, four zeros. So 21, 21 is a zero. 21, 22 is a zero. 21, 23 is a zero. And 21, 24 is a zero. And then we have 21, 25, 21, 26, and 21, 27. They're right here, and they're all ones. So let's put ones here. Now the global bits that tell us whether this chip is registered, complex, or simple mode, they're at SYN 2192 and AC0, make that a zero, not a one, AC0 2193. Let's go find those guys. 
down here at the very last line is 2176. So let's count over until we bump into 2192. There's 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92. 92 is a 1. And 93 right beside it is a zero. Okay, so there is our chart. Now we want to fill out our chart based on the data sheet to tell us whether these ICs are active high or active low, and whether they're inputs or outputs, and the mode of the entire chip. Bring up our data sheet. First, I like to find out what mode I'm in. So the SYN is a 1 and AC0 is a 0. Let's go over here to the data sheet and let's look to see what mode we're in first. Here in registered mode, SYN is 0 and AC0 is 1. Well, that's not us. We're 1 and 0. So let's put that page off to the side. Complex mode. SYN is 1 and S A I'm sorry, AC0 is 1. Well, that's not us again. We're 1 and 0, not 1 and 1. So let's put that page off to the side. Here you go. Here we are. Simple mode. SYN equals 1. AC0 equals 0. That's us. SYN is 1. AC0 is 0. This is us. That's our configuration right there. Now you can see we have three different outputs and inputs we can go in simple mode. First, let's find out who's active high and active low with our exclusive OR. That's our exclusive OR bit right there. Goes into an exclusive OR logic gate. So at 2048, pin 19, at position 2048 in the matrix, we had a 1. Let's go over here and we'll look. Exclusive OR equals 0 defines an active low output. Exclusive OR equals 1 defines an active high output. Okay, let's write that in here. A 1 is active high. 2049 is the same, so I'll just put a little tick mark underneath of it indicating that both of those are active high. 2050 is a zero. According to our data sheet, a zero is active low. Let me put that in there. Active high, active low. 2051 and 2052 are zeros also, so those are active low. Put my little tick mark right there. Oh, here's 2053, 54, and 55. They're a 1, so they're active high. Let me put that in there. Active high. Okay. That tells us that when pin 19 is asserted by that input equation on the input pins, pin 19 will go low to high. Pin 18 will go low to high when it's asserted, when it's activated. 14, 13, and 12 will also go from 0 to 5 volts when they're activated. Now, 17, 16, and 15 
are already at 5 volts when they're not being asserted by the input pins that uh, activate that output. 17, 16, and 15 are at 5 volts and when they're activated they go to 0 volts. Ain't that something? Look at that chip. How, how do these designers come up with that stuff? That is absolutely fascinating. Okay, so Who's an input and who's an output? Who is an input and who's an output? Because down here, look at this. We have two functions that are outputs in simple mode and one function that is an input back into the, the array. So how do we know who an input uh, pin is and who's an output pin? Well, let's go over here. This is the AC1 function that tells us who the inputs are and who the outputs are. So we go to pin 19. Let's look at this. AC1 equals 0 defines this configuration except for pins 15 and 16. Pins 15 and 16 are always configured as outputs. So let's write that in there. 16 is an output and 15 is an output. I'll put a little tick mark underneath of there. Those guys are always outputs. So here a 0 defines this configuration and 15 and 16 are always this configuration. So a 0 is at 19, 18, and 17. They're outputs also. Put a little tick mark underneath there. So we have five outputs when those inputs uh, equations satisfy these each individual outputs. We have five outputs. Now who are the inputs? The one will define the inputs. So we know that pins 14, 13, and 12 are configured as inputs back into the array. So we'll write input here. A tick mark and a tick mark indicating that these three pins are inputs. And this indicates simple mode. Amazing! <laughs> you see how easy that is? That's amazing. That is so simple. Now that's how you hand disassemble the configuration of the generic array logic. All you need is a PDF and the JEDEC code for that IC and you can hand disassemble the ones and zeros of that IC. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>